All right, so we're gonna do some electric cooking. We get a lot of uh, questions about how we like this setup as far as the galley goes with the little electric air fryer oven and the induction cooktop. And we're also gonna be doing, so we're doing some steaks and risotto and what else are we gonna have? Crusty. Oh, crusty, yeah, just some cheesy bread. What we've been doing a lot with steaks and it works really nice and it's pretty no brainer is the uh, sous vide machine. And it's just a little water bath with a circulator and you set the timer. You set the temperature of the timer and you walk away for an hour and it rocks. And then you just sear it in a pan for, you know, like a minute or two on each side and you get the nice crust. Hey, we're Jenny and Rich, and our stowaway is Twitchell the Marina Cat. We've been documenting the refit of our 1977 Tayona 37 Ramble On for the past several years. I don't think there's a single part of this boat that we haven't repaired, replaced, or improved in some way. We're proud to say we've done 99.9% .9 of the work ourselves. We've gained a lot of knowledge and experience in the process, and we're happy to pass that wisdom on. So we were cleaning out the freezer and everything and uh, came across a couple of these from Butcher Box. They're just, we used to get Butcher Box subscription meat by mail, but it's grass fed top sirloin from Butcher Box. Just, yeah, just a little salt and pepper and that was it. Jenny did that. And now I gotta make a seal meal bag for the thing. You know, we could do it in those silicone bags. Do you wanna just do it in those? Well, we got that Actually, a thinner one would be better. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's that do that. Too. No, too small. Just this one? Yeah. So, didn't need this after all. Typically we do that. Typically yeah, we do that. Yeah, is, I plan on bringing a sealer meal with us anyway, so. Right, but I brought, I bought these stasher bags. Yeah. And they're airtight, right, if you want to push on that a little more. Yeah, biggest reason to get all the air out is because the thing will float. It'll float in the bag. But and we've never used these for Subi, so let's try uh, This is the first time. The whole thing concept of this is we're just cooking with electricity. We don't have gas on the boat anymore. So right now we got 134 watts coming in. We're at 13.29 volts. We were pretty much 100% when we did this, uh, when we started doing this. And uh, we just flicked on the water heater. That's pulling six, 1500 watts, something like that. We'll see how much we're at as far as uh, battery goes. We've basically drained 0.6 amp hours out of the uh, battery bank right now where we sit, just flicking on that. So not bad. Yeah, 126 watts of solar, it's cloudy day out. Um, so we're making about half of what we normally would. It's almost, it's about 1.30 or two o'clock and the sun is practically dead overhead. So this thing has a minimum and a maximum level. So I'm gonna set it, it's at 134 right now. That's gonna be the temperature that it hits and maintains it and probably for, I'm guessing, the big steak and then, then the little steak will cook pretty quick. 45 minutes. I'll go 50 just to see. Well, when we hit 134, it doesn't matter. I just go for an hour just to make it easy. So this thing won't start counting down the hour long cook procedure until it gets up to 134 degrees. Yeah, it pulls as much as the water heater. It's like 1500 watt immersion heater. So it'll do that for an hour. Well, off and on, it'll cycle. That's true. Once it gets up to temperature, it will cycle. It's, you know, it's still early in the day. We got a couple of things we were gonna do. Um, but uh, yeah, you set this for an hour and I'll be here when it shuts off. So yeah, once it, uh, once it finishes, cool it down. Uh, you can keep it overnight if you want. Uh, pull it out 30 minutes before you're ready to cook it and should be good to go. All right, so this thing just hit, uh, what was it, 134, and the countdown just started, so it's gonna go for about 58 more minutes, I think. Now this thing, this thing was pulling like 700 watts, and now we're down to like 80 watts. So it'll cycle back and forth to uh, keep the, what do you call it, keep the uh, temperature sustained. So it'll cycle on and off. But right now we've got, we had some pretty mad solar, so we got 320 watts coming in the boat right now. Um, out of a 350 watt array, so not too bad. We've pulled 12.3 amp hours out of the uh, out of the bank. 
uh, cloud pa clouds passing over, so it drops down to 100 watts, but all in all, not bad solar coming in. So it's pretty much done. Right now, it doesn't look that appetizing. It's a little gray, but that's what the sear's for. There it is. Time's up, gives you a little beeper. So I'm just gonna immerse this in some cold water and turn this thing off. Just let it sit here for a little bit, cool down, and then when we're ready to grill tonight, we'll take it out and uh, throw it in a pan. So we're sitting at like 98% still, 98.4%, and 91 watts coming into the boat, 90-ish. It varies with cloud cover. Um, we were actually putting in, at one point, more than we were using. We're still putting in right now because we're down to like 10 watts. But overall, we use 12.3 amp hours out of 800 in that little cooking session with the sous vide. But uh, I did turn on the water heater for a little bit as well. So when you do that, you can see it goes right back up 800 watts. Uh, one thing we got is a pretty decent draw as far as the uh, cooktop. Uh, this thing pulls like it's about an amp and a half or two amps uh, parasitic draw with the cooktop on. Here's Jenny looking for a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some prep work to do. Okay. Yeah, I got to deal with that meat. So there's that bag of meat. We pulled yeah, it out. We just leave it until. Yeah, totally. We got to pat it dry and then get a little bit of seasoning. Okay. Let me, um, how about I have you grate some cheese? 18 amp hours. Oh, yeah? Like eight? We're only making 55 watts right now. So it's pulling 55 watts of solar, that is. 900, 900 watts is coming out. And our gauge is sitting at 18.6. We're still 97% of our battery capacity. So I'm really not sweating. So 990 watts we're pulling right now. We're only bringing 50 watts into the boat with solar. We're still at 94.5% battery capacity. Mm, not bad. Right. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Cauliflower rice risotto. <laughs> with Parmesan and lots of seasoning. That's pretty good. Mmm. steak's good too. How's your steak? I mean, you like the color? Mm-hmm. Mine's a little bit pink. Pretty good. Juices are running clear. Sous vide. Steak has a good flavor. I'm surprised mine is as pink as it is. Yeah, it came out pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, they both cooked about the same. Mine's a little more rare than yours. Mm -hmm. But I like it that way. It's, I like this cauliflower rice. It's really good. So 51.8 amp hours. 93.3% of our battery bank. After we kind of looked at that video that we made... Uh, cooking the steak and everything, we kind of thought about it, and that's not really a typical meal. That's kind of a a little bit more elaborate meal than we would normally make. So 
we decided to make something very simple. And also I should mention one other thing we didn't really talk about is all the other things that were running that also draw power from the batteries. Like the refrigerator was running. You know, we did have some lights on here and there. The water maker or the water heater was on for a little bit. Um, so all those things kind of, it, you know, 51 amps, amp hours seems like a lot. Um, but that's including all those other things that also run throughout the day. I think we started about, we turned the power off about 1.50 in the afternoon, and I'm not sure what time we finished, but by the time we were done making everything and we were eating, that's where we were at with the 51.8 amp hours. So anyway, tonight what we're going to do is just something very simple and short. This is how we typically eat. We just have some turkey that we're gonna brown and we're gonna make some tacos. I've got little tacos, um, some cotilla cheese, a little bit of tomato, some cabbage. We got this yummy little adobo sauce and we're just gonna make that and see how many amp hours that takes because that's typically how we eat. We just eat pretty basic. Sometimes we don't eat at all or we just have snacks. We eat out of a bag. Sometimes we eat out of a bag or like last, was it last night? No. Last night we had pizzas. Oh, yeah. I think the night before I had a um, peanut butter and honey sandwich. So. That took zero amp hours to make. <laughs> anyway, is the power off? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cooktop's on. There's that parasitic draw kicking in. So we always turn the breaker off with this thing uh, when we're not using it. We're making 103 watts of solar. Batteries are 100%. And... Let's say zero amp hours. See how long it takes to cook turkey burger. We didn't really talk about the cooktop either. So this little thing, um, really, I, I either do five or less on most things that I'm cooking. And it heats up really quickly. And five is really hot. Boiling water, obviously, you know, put on high, put on the max for that. But everything else, we just have it on medium. And that's, it draws up to about 15 amps. So this draws about seven and a half or seven. 860 watts is what we're pulling right now. Crank it up to 10 just for kicks. So at maximum power, it's 1350, 1360 watts. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this new crazy mother. I'm almost done. This is basically done browning. I'm just kind of waiting for some of the moisture to evaporate. But one thing about induction cooktops, in case you don't know, is you can't lift up the pans once they're on. Otherwise, you get an error on the on the readout here. So anytime we want to do anything, like I'm gonna I'm gonna take all this out and I'm gonna cook these little tortillas in there real quickly. Um, you actually have to just turn it off. Still at 19.2 amp hours. Oh, quite a bit. Quite a bit, actually. Yeah, I was guessing 15 to do this little deal. Okay. But I forgot about the. Uh... Tortillas? Yeah. All right, so here we are at 20 amp hours. And that was a pretty quick burst because we pretty much just hit it hard just cooking dinner with the electric cooktop with only we we're averaging 100, and, 100 to 120 watts of solar coming into the boat. So that's where we're at right now. <clears throat> yeah, this is more representative of how we cook on a boat. We're pretty casual. We don't make big or elaborate, elaborate dinners all the time. So, well, yeah. And as far as the question goes about people ask us, you know, do you like it? You know, would you do anything different? Uh, you know, two years later, two and a half years later, I think is where we're at now. I wouldn't change a thing. I love it. I wouldn't go back to propane. Propane is inefficient. It's about 60% efficient as far as your return on investment. Um, puts a lot of humidity into the boat. It puts a lot of heat into the boat in the summertime. I mentioned when we were uh, doing the electric oven enclosure and all that, this whole conversion, when I pulled out that Force 10, it was very 
finicky. Um, it didn't really simmer very well. I mean, it was all or nothing. And it was very hard to regulate the heat inside the uh, oven box, you know, like cooking a pizza or anything like that. Um, the burners, you know, had, I think, two big burners or one big burner and two small burners and none of them simmered very well. And it was like the flame was either up or it was down and it just, you had to babysit it. It was a, it was a pain in the neck. This one, you just set, set it, let it go and it does its thing. Um, one thing you can do with this is also set a temperature for it and it'll simmer at, you know, whatever. Oh, 200 degrees or 180 degrees. I do like the uh, induction cooktop. Um, you do have to turn the breaker off when we're done using it, so it's wired to its own circuit. Uh, the oven has its own 15 amp breaker as well. But it doesn't have to be No, the oven stays on all the time. It doesn't have that. For some reason, there's something on circuitry in there that just, it's always pulling amps. Um, you know, it's not a marine appliance, so. You know, we got a household appliance off Amazon, and but so yeah. If you got any other questions, uh, you know, about whether or not we like it or whatever about our battery bank, you know, feel free to hit us up. And write them down below. We'll leave them right down there under the video.